And behold, a man with leprosy came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Throughout uh, most of Zaire, even in urban areas like Kananga, but primarily in the more rural areas, there is, there is often simply no significant obstetrical care. In the case, example case in point, uh, was a lady who was in labor in a village about 50 miles from here. She was in labor for a day or so. The baby was lying crosswise. Somebody in the village, we don't know who, attempted to deliver her. And they managed to get a hold of both feet and both arms. And they pulled and tugged and, of course, couldn't, couldn't deliver her. Finally, they put her on a truck, which made that 50-mile trek over about a four-hour time. And after she got to Kananga, she was put onto some other vehicle and brought out here to this hospital. So when she arrived, she had not only a dead baby, but she had a very sick mother. And we did a, did a section on her for what we knew was a dead baby and a ruptured uterus. It's an example of a, of a, of a tremendous complication to a problem which is normally resolved by a very simple uh, surgical technique. Uh, but across a good bit of the interior of Zaire, that sort of care isn't available. And heaven only knows how many women simply die in rural areas in childbirth uh, for a lack of, of uh, either the care or lack of transport to get someplace where there's care. I don't perceive that there will be a day where we could say we no longer need you to work with us because you've trained somebody to do your job. The patients come and they go, but the people that we work with and the students that are here for four years see us day in and day out. And they know what makes us tick or what doesn't make us tick. So this is one of our great needs is to instill compassion by example and by, by teaching. This is the story of the Christian Medical Institute of the Kasai, a health-promoting and teaching complex located in the Central African nation of Zaire. Consisting of a hospital, a school for nursing and lab technicians, and an urban outpatient clinic, the Institute has continued to serve the people of this impoverished country despite political instability, civil unrest, and the economic crisis that is so common in the third world. In order to meet the needs of the people it serves, the Institute has focused its energies on education, health care, and a gospel witness. Truly the heart of Africa, the former Belgian colony is a massive equatorial country, sprawling over an area the size of Western Europe, or all of the United States east of the Mississippi River. With an estimated population of 30 million people, most of Zaire is thinly populated, making travel and communication throughout the interior difficult. Economically, the estimated per capita income is around $200 a year. Consequently, poverty and hunger are rampant. Located outside of the interior city of Kananga, the Institute serves the village of Chikaji and the surrounding urban and rural population. When missionaries arrived in the 19th century, they found people who had no written language, no draft animals, and were yet to discover the wheel. In many ways, life hasn't changed much, over the years, Zaire's urban areas have seen a degree of development, but still lack many modern conveniences. Kananga, with an estimated population of 330,000, remains today one of the world's largest cities without a consistent supply of electricity. 60% of Zaire's population is rural. In villages like Chikaji, an absence of running water and electricity is normal. Life goes on as it has for centuries a daily struggle that begins before the equatorial sun rises and never seems to end. In Zaire, change comes slowly, little by little, step by step. The Christian Medical Institute of the Kasai is making an impact. Zaire's troubles did not develop overnight. 
The Christian Medical Institute of the Kasai set out to tackle these problems early on through education. Influencing a major portion of the work at the Institute, the nursing and lab technician schools have developed into one of the best training facilities in the country. In addition to his work as a physician, Dr. Walt Hall heads up the education program. The Institute is, is, is directed in, uh, by a set of statutes which were set out in the, early 19, in, the, in the 1960s. And those statutes indicate that our number one reason for being is to provide an educational, educational experience for medical and paramedical personnel. Secondly, to provide medical care for the people in the vicinity. Enrolling 107 students in 1987, the four-year nursing program draws students from all parts of Zaire. Graduates are qualified to work as hospital nurses, midwives, and often serve as primary health care providers in many parts of the country. Blending Zaireans into the work of the Institute is key to its ultimate success. Dr. Mpoi Lupungu is a former student at the school and now serves as the director of nursing. So far, we have prepared over 300 students since 1954. Because of the great need in Zaire in particular, we want to increase the amount of graduates until we find it at a proportional level to the population. Uh, you know, I would hate to think of working without him. Uh, he brings a maturity, uh, a patience again, uh, uh, a knowledge of, of his material, uh, a desire to teach. One of only two schools in the nation, the lab school prepares students to meet technological advances in health care. Nancy Norman is the director of the program. Well, we uh, have the students here for four years, and uh, we try to teach them the different types of techniques that they would learn in the States, but with uh, appropriate technology that they could use in this country. We're real pleased with what people think about our graduates, and they're constantly in, uh, um, requested. We are always getting requests for them. And in fact, almost all of our graduates have uh, two, three, four different uh, places where they could work. But we don't have enough graduates yet. To complement the students' work in the classroom and laboratory, the Institute has committed much of its resources toward hands-on training. Any technical training program, medicine being an example of that, is that you, you can easily provide the classroom work. That takes uh, some chairs and a table and a blackboard and somebody who prepares notes for that, for that lecture. But technical training, preparing people to do a technical task. Uh, uh, the classroom teaching is only a, a significant part of that. But the, the other major part of it is on-site, hands-on, supervised training. And that's what takes a lot of, of man hours. which uh, uh, is not formal teaching. It's simply watching, correcting, disciplining, uh, uh, advising as you go. Part of the work at the Institute is the training of non-medical personnel. Susan Buxton runs an optical shop and supervises the training of Zairean technicians. A person here, even if they only pay a thousand Z's per pair of glasses, that could be like one quarter of a month's salary. What would be the alternative if the optical center here at the PAX wasn't available? You mean for the people to get glasses? They probably have to go to Kinshasa or to Lubumbash, and either way, they wouldn't get glasses. It's, to go either direction, return would cost about $200. And, you know, people don't have that kind of money. If they buy the glasses here, they pay about, they pay about $8, the equivalent of eight American dollars for a pair of glasses. No one's going go to spend the 200 to go to Kinshasa to buy them. It's only the rich that want to do that. Tackling the massive project of rewiring the Institute, Keith Finley and Reeve Hastings are also busy teaching Zaireans the electrician's trade. And electrical equipment will do all the transfer switching, and that's what we call phase one. Phase two will rewire all the hospital buildings. Phase three will rewire the uh, living compound, which will make the whole station be completely up to date. We definitely hope that when we leave, the men we've been working with will be able to do the same kinds of things that we did. Some of the most difficult positions to fill and the most, some of the most critical positions to fill are not teachers, doctors, preachers, but rather maintenance people like electricians, 
plumbers, builders, mechanics. And historically, those people have, have not been the ones that have been trained nearly so much as have teachers, doctors, and preachers uh, on the mission field. Education at the Institute isn't limited only to nurses, lab technicians, and electricians. Early on, staff members recognized the problems of malnutrition in the area and responded by establishing the Nutrition Rehabilitation Unit. Dr. Richard Brown is the Director of Public Health at the Institute. The idea was to set aside a certain building or a certain area where severely malnourished children could be examined and treated and fed and their mothers and caretakers taught how to, to better feed the children. Working with families on a daily basis, the mother supervisor monitors the development of children. She oversees the feeding of the children. She can sense when the child is not doing well and needs to have a special care or special medicine. Sometimes she'll call me at night and say, this child is so malnourished and he's not doing well, he needs to be put in the hospital. Education is an effective tool that doesn't meet the total needs of those who are desperate for medical attention. Constructed in 1975 through a donation from the women of the Southern Presbyterian Church and other organizations, the Good Shepherd Hospital is without rival, the best hospital in central Zaire. Developed as a teaching base for the nursing school, the 140-bed facility provided over 50,000 days of inpatient care with an average occupancy of 98% in 1987. Dr. Birch Rambo is the medical director of the Institute and has been in Zaire since 1964. In addition to his responsibilities as a surgeon, Dr. Rambo oversees the entire operation of the Institute. Christ commanded us to heal and showed us by example that he uh, represents the God who heals and, and uh, wants us to be well. But uh, that particular episode where the, the leper comes to Jesus with some question in his mind whether Jesus would want to make him well. He said, Jesus, if you want to, you can heal me. And Jesus responds, yes, I do want to be healed. And uh, I think this is important for people here because in their concept, all disease is caused by spiritual forces outside their control or, or controlled by other people. And so they have this question in their mind and we like to emphasize that God is a God of love who heals. Uh, not always, of course, but that's his command to us to heal what we can. And then the fact that God wants us to heal, that means that we need to take, uh, take part as his servants to bring healing. In Zaire, most health care facilities can provide only basic treatment. At the Good Shepherd Hospital, specialists in ophthalmology, obstetrics, gynecology, and pathology are on permanent staff. Dr. John Trulson is an ear, nose, and throat specialist from Dallas, Texas. Well, the fellow you saw this morning had this problem here. He's had it for eight years. So, I, you know, what they do is they'll, they'll see uh, just whatever doctor they can, and he'll do whatever he can for them. Sometimes they can treat it, sometimes they can't. The ability to quickly diagnose malignant tumors, tuberculosis, and other diseases can save many lives. Dr. Faye Sinclair operates the only pathology lab in Zaire's interior. Well, in most ways, I think we would compare uh, to the pathology of the 1970s at home. We don't have any automation, but uh, we do the routine processing, uh, we do it manually. A very common thing is tuberculosis. Uh, also, unlike what many people think, we, we do see a lot of tumors, cancers here in the tropics. In order to meet the needs of the 300,000 people in nearby Kananga, an outpatient clinic was established in the heart of the former Belgian railhead. Originally a luxury hotel, the city center health clinic has lost much of its original elegance, yet improved its usefulness immeasurably. We have an enormously successful uh, immunization program. Um, it's actually the largest immunization program in the entire area. Our health team is there giving uh, baby shots uh, every day in the week. Not only are they giving the shots, but they're giving uh, education on family planning to the mothers. Uh, they weigh the babies, uh, and each, each uh, of these babies has its own health card. Um, they chart the, the weight of the baby. 
each month and you can follow on the chart the progress uh, in terms of weight of the child's health. In a country where life is often a struggle to survive, basic eye care is not high on many lists. That is if you can see. Dr. Ralph Shannon, an American ophthalmologist, is the only certified eye doctor in Central Zaire and has pioneered an eye clinic at the city center. I'm the only one in the central part of Zaire, along with Dr. Kasonga, whom we are training in ophthalmology. Talking about five or more million people uh, without an ophthalmologist. In recent years, a soaring annual inflation rate in Zaire has watered down the economy. Combined with the fall of the dollar on world markets, the situation has dramatically affected the Institute's ability to purchase medical supplies and maintain a minimum standard of care. Nancy Hall is the Institute's business manager. One of the greatest dilemmas that we have is to balance costs against service to people because there is no way that we could charge people what it actually costs and still meet the needs of those who cannot pay. Our greatest need right now that I'm struggling with is funds to buy medicines. It's, our costs have nearly doubled in that score in the last two or three years due to inflation. When we came to Zaire in 1970, I could buy a sack of sugar for five Zaires. Last week I paid 4,500 Zaires. Although 50% of all costs at the Good Shepherd Hospital are covered by gifts, donations, and other sources, the balance falls on patients who are already overburdened. The, the per capita income, which is for what it's worth, is listed at, at around $200 per person per year. You contrast that to the U.S. figure of about $12,500 per person per year as an average uh, per capita income. Uh, financial backing, of course, is extremely important. We live in such a poor economy and a low per capita income. There's no way we can uh, give respectable, halfway respectable medical care without subsidies from overseas. The patients do pay what they can, and uh, they're very good about it, really. They appreciate the care. But uh, in order to buy drugs overseas and equipment and so on, we just need to have it be subsidized from overseas. Even city hospitals in the States need subsidies. They get it from the community chest or the United Way or the government or something like that. And just uh, here we just need it that much more. We operate extremely economically, really, but uh, still uh, financial help is necessary. When funding is made available, the Institute makes the most of it. Electricity is an essential element of any Western hospital. In Zaire, available power is a rare luxury. And until recently, the Institute had to supply its own power with diesel generators. Alex Downey is an engineer and supervises the operation of the new hydroelectric dam. The hospital had no regular source of electricity other than some, uh, they had their own small diesel generators and they could never have power 24 hours a day. So, so the dam was built to, uh, to, to pr uh, provide 24-hour electricity. And also, uh, a result of that, they can now have water 24 hours a day, too, because they can run their pumps whenever they need water. Where hydroelectric power was the answer for Chikaji, solar power was the solution at the city center health clinic in Kananga. John Goodsky is an industrial engineer and supervised the installation of solar panels at the clinic. When I got here in September, the uh, city Electricity had gone off the air due to the lack of mazout uh, fuel, diesel, to run the generators. The whole city was without? The whole city was without. And the PAX is right in the middle of the city, and also without water as far as that goes. But we needed to get electricity, and I happened to have a big shipment that came in of a hundred of these panels and many batteries and a lot of lights and equipment. So now the PAX can operate 24 hours a day with, with electricity. ministry goes hand in hand with everything else that we do. Uh, we don't try to separate that. Uh, when the spoken word is appropriate, we, we give it. But uh, a lot of love is shown through all that we do here, which points to uh, our faith, 
and to the Lord. Ultimately, the basic motivation of the Institute is to honor and communicate the love of God. The first missionaries came about a hundred years ago and found, of course, people who had no written language, uh, no draft animals, um, no, they didn't really have the wheel. So it was a very primitive culture. And the influence was very small, just a few scattered spots for many years. So it's really very remarkable that there's a tremendous uh, church. Meeting the spiritual needs of the people in the village is an important part of Kapiumba Dibu's work as a chaplain at the Institute. The people of the village, they know God, but they don't know God as the Father of Christ. That's why when we go to the village, we try to show them the love of God through Jesus Christ. As an outgrowth of the spiritual work at the Institute, a church was established in the village. Blending elements of African culture and Western Christianity, the church has developed a sense of harmony that is uniquely Zairean. Throughout Africa, Zaire is known for its music. Beginning with the call to worship on a wooden drum, the open-air sanctuary is filled with a rich array of songs, hymns, and choruses in the local native Chaluba language. In keeping with local custom, men, women, and children sit on separate log benches as the service takes on a festive atmosphere. It can be argued that the Christian Medical Institute of the Kasai has done little to affect change since its beginnings in 1954. Disease, hunger, and poverty are still the constant companion of most Zaireans. The wounds of colonialism have left deep scars that may never be healed. As Western governments pour millions of relief dollars into societies that are racked by corruption and civil unrest, some have suggested a complete withdrawal of finances and personnel, leaving third world countries like Zaire to fend for themselves. To ignore the pain and agony that is so prevalent or to attempt a quick solution through relief programs will only prolong the environment of futility. Elizabeth Shannon is the wife of ophthalmologist Ralph Shannon and came to Zaire in 1963. And so I would tend to say, yes, our goal out here is to come out and, and do a job and train someone to take over and then you leave. That would go very well. That would, would go along very well with the desire of my heart. However, I do not feel that um, that is what is needed in this country. If mission's goal is the, 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 the reaching and changing of people, and if it is true, as we're sure it's true, that you cannot change people like you change nuts and bolts, that people change slowly with time, with, uh, by virtue of relationships and example and so forth, as the Spirit works in through them, if that's the way people change, then agents of change must be willing to be around for a long time. After our last furlough, when we had to leave our oldest daughter across the ocean, and she said to me, Mom, Zaire needs Daddy more than I need you. You must go back. Uh, it's hard to explain what kind of satisfaction you derive from that. But when your children that God has given you and that you have raised with a consciousness of wanting them to be the very best for Him, are used of Him to confirm His will in your life, I don't think there is a greater satisfaction that I could expect. 